Welcome back to 212 Kids. Guys, I am so excited because guess what? It's almost Christmas. I am so excited because we're talking about the greatest gift that's ever been given to us. And that's right, it's Jesus. Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift, right? Well, we're gonna talk a little bit later about why Jesus is God's greatest gift. But first, I want to do something right now that we love to do. Let's take them some time to sing and tell God how much we love him and to say thank you for sending Jesus to be born. Let's get in some praise and worship. Are you ready? Let's go. Great job worshiping, guys. Man, isn't it fun to sing Christmas carols about how great the gift that Jesus was? Now listen, this is a special week, probably one of the most special weeks of the whole entire year. And maybe it's because I'm a little older, but every year this time, I start to think about what's important in life, my faith and my family and my friends. And there's this sense of wonder that's in the air, this sense of excitement and anticipation. And let me tell you what, this week we are celebrating one of the greatest events, actually the greatest event in all of human history, and it's when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Now, this whole story in the Bible is amazing from start to finish, and I want to set the stage for you as we get into our story today. Last week, we learned that the angel Gabriel was sent to Mary, and she told Mary that she would have a baby. The angel told Mary that she was to name the baby Jesus, and Jesus wouldn't be just any ordinary baby. No, he was going to be the Savior that God had promised to the world, the Savior that people had been waiting for for literally thousands and thousands of years. 
Well, Mary, when she heard the news, went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was also going to have a baby. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months. Well, after Mary went home to Nazareth, the ruler of the land, Caesar Augustus, made a new law. Oh, he said this. He said this was the law, that everyone should go to their hometown to be counted. So that meant that Mary and her now husband Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem. You see, Bethlehem was known as the town of David, and that's where Joseph and his family came from because he was in the family line of David. Now, Mary and Joseph probably knew the words that God had spoken through the prophet Micah hundreds of years before. Let me read it to you. In Micah chapter 5, verse 2, it said this, Bethlehem, you may not be known as an important town in the nation of Judah, but out from you will come for me a ruler over Israel. Now, we have no idea what Mary and Joseph's journey was actually like, but the route that they took probably looked something like this. You see, they had to travel from Nazareth way up here, right? Down through all the flatlands in the Jordan River, over the hills surrounding Jerusalem, on to Bethlehem. And this journey was about 70 miles. It would be kind of like from here in the desert that we live in, all the way to Disneyland, right? And remember, guys, there were no cars or trains back then, so Mary and Joseph had to travel by donkey and on foot. And it would take them many, many days. And they weren't traveling on nice paved roads either. No, it was rocky and dusty, and, and maybe the winds were blowing. And maybe they had to walk in the rain. Maybe they had to worry about wild animals or robbers. <laughs> Are you getting the picture, guys? This was not an easy journey at all, especially for someone who was about to have a baby. Well, finally, Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. But as we read in the book of Luke, in Luke chapter 2, verse 7, it says this, there was no guest room where they could stay. And again, we don't know exactly what this looked like, but everywhere they went, Mary and Joseph kept hearing this. That's right, there was no room, there was no place. And they were running out of time because Mary was not getting any less pregnant. Eventually, they ended up in the only place they could find, a place where animals stayed. And there, Mary gave birth to Jesus. While this happened, a group of shepherds were gathered in a field outside of town. And listen, it was the shepherds' job to watch over their flocks and protect them from wild animals. And suddenly, something strange and amazing happened. In Luke chapter 2, verse 9, it says this, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And the shepherds were terrified. But the angel said this, he said, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news. It will bring joy to all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here's how you will know that I'm telling the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Then a large group of angels appeared, and they were praising God, and they said this, May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those that he's pleased with on earth. Well, at that time, the angels left and went into heaven, and the shepherds were probably like, What was that? They were scared. They were excited. They were overwhelmed. You name it, they probably felt it. But listen to what the shepherds did next. In Luke chapter 2, verse 15, it says this. They said, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord told us about. Well, the shepherds hurried to find Mary, Joseph, and the baby. And just as the angel said, Jesus was lying in a manger. Guys, after the shepherds saw Jesus, they went and told everyone that they knew. They explained that the angel had told them about Jesus and that Jesus was the promised Savior that God had promised them. And what about Mary? 
Well, you know what? If you read on in Luke, the Bible says this, that Mary kept all these things as a secret in her heart, as a treasure, and she thought about them over and over. You know, Mary must have thought about this, about how the angel first appeared to her, about how then she went to visit Elizabeth, about their long journey to Bethlehem, and now the Son of God was right there asleep in her arms. From the beginning, God had always had a plan to rescue all people. And that night, the angels announced the good news to the shepherds, the good news that would bring joy to everyone in the entire world, including us today. You see, God kept his promise. He sent his son to be the savior. And that's our bottom line today, guys, that we can celebrate because God sent a savior. God sent his son, Jesus, to save us. And that's why Jesus is the greatest gift that the world has ever known. Let's stop and pray right now and thank God that he sent Jesus the greatest gift. God, we thank you so much for this story, this true story of how you sent Jesus to be the savior of the world. That wasn't only the savior for people back then, but Jesus is the savior for us today. That God, we were lost in our sin, but Jesus came to rescue us. And we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus to be born and eventually die for us and for our sins. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your love as we celebrate the greatest gift ever given, which is Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Everywhere you go. Take a look now at Amazon. My wish list is really fun. With video games and techie things that glow. <sighs> hey, I'm Lawson, and not only did I just write that incredible Christmas song just for you, but I also have an amazing story to tell you as well. So, hold on to your antlers. Because here we go! So, my aunt knows this kid, David. And David loves Christmas Day. But sometimes all the stuff leading up to it can be a little stressful. Or a lot stressful. On Monday, David is supposed to memorize lines for the Christmas play. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. While decorating Christmas cookies for teacher gifts. And then on Tuesday, there's the big family Christmas card photo with a brand new Christmas outfit. And Wednesday will be clean the house for Christmas day, including the baby spot. And then there are all the Christmas parties with weird food and nosy ants. <gasps> Oh my, how you've grown! So, on December 1st, David takes a look at it all and decides he's just gonna hide out until Christmas! But David's mom sees what's going on and she says, I'm sorry our Christmas has gotten so out of control! Because Christmas is really about celebrating one thing. So, they decide they'll get rid of the crazy schedule and instead, they'll each pick one favorite Christmas thing. So dad picks a Christmas dance party. And mom chooses a really cool advent calendar to open each day, filled with chocolate and dinosaurs. And David picks designing their own super amazing Lego nativity scene. And then they all sing, Christmas time is awesome. Christmas time is cool because it's part of God's plan. So kids, even when Christmas time gets kind of busy, don't stress out. And do remember that Christmas is all about celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Hmm. You know what? I think I need to put more Legos on my wish list. You mean besides the 23 bins of bricks you already have? Well, that's a place to start, yes. Um. <laughs> Anyways, so, Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a good morning.
evening, the afternoon, whatever suits your fancy. Take your pick. I'll see you guys next time. Mom, where are my presents? Wow. Oh, wow. What an amazing way to tell the Christmas story, right? You can actually picture and listen to the sounds, right? And what it must have been like for Mary and Joseph on their journey. Man, it's amazing, right? As we celebrate this Christmas week, let's remember the real reason why we're celebrating. This is the good news of great joy for all of us. And this is why we celebrate. We celebrate because God sent a Savior. Guys, I know there are so many reasons for us to be excited this year. I, I, I love the lights this time of year and the decorations. I love the gifts and the cookies, right? I love gathering with all my friends and all my family. But listen, here's what I want to celebrate the most. We want to remember that God sent Jesus to be our Savior. And guys, listen, our memory verse for this month is a great one, and it's probably the most famous verse in the Bible. Let's read it together, you at home and me right here. John chapter 3, verse 16, it says this, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, and anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. You see, Jesus is God's greatest gift, and we could put our trust in a relationship with Jesus, knowing that we're going to be with God in heaven because it's going to last forever. And there's nothing in the world that is better than that. Guys, that's it for today. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and I hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time here at 212 Kids. Hey guys, be sure to click here to watch another episode of 212 Kids and click here to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes.